Yellowstone magnitude 6.5 quake west of the uh, supervolcano has elevated seismic activity and we're going to take a look this time at the Idaho volcanoes in the area that is getting the quake swarm. And this is the past Yellowstone eruption. This is uh, part of where we had our earthquakes. And this is the mantle plume, the magma right under there. You can see how close it is to the surface. And it's coming from Baja, the west arm going San Andreas and Walker Lane fault system. The mantle plume is coming right from Baja, the eastern part going right through Baja, through Utah, through Idaho, and uh, Yellowstone. Utah, we remember, had the 5.7 quake out of nowhere and is still having quake swarms up to today. We also had a 5 magnitude earthquake out of nowhere again in northwest Texas that shook Salt Lake City, Utah. Utah has eight volcanoes, the last eruption of the youngest one being 660 years ago. Let's take a look at what volcanoes we have west of Yellowstone supervolcano. I will be surprised to find nine volcanoes there. At, uh, yesterday, 6.5, just about this time. Uh, yesterday, and as you can see, we have, what, 30, 40, 40, 40 quakes there. What can I tell you? 40 quakes, and uh, this is the area of Boise, Idaho, and uh, Boise Mountains we have there, and uh, that's the most populated area, I think, there. Otherwise, you don't have that much of a population. And this is Yellowstone right there. Those quakes are right over Yellowstone Lake, and that one there is over Hebgen Lake. Okay, it's West Yellowstone, and that's that, that's the caldera right there. And um, this is where we had our quake swarm. There's about this is the past hour. This just came in, 2.5. Okay, they're basically shallow earthquakes, but let's remember that uh, the caldera uh, magma chamber roof is only three miles under the surface. Um, and as we saw from that mantle plume, the magma is very, very close to the surface of the Earth. And this is what it looks like is still ongoing. The blue is the past day. This is the big one just about uh, 25 hours ago. And uh, they're still ongoing, as you can see. Something is going on there. And let's take a look at um, the shake map again so you can see the intensity. It's, uh, it's and while that wakes up, let's go to, okay. This is the uh, Idaho volcanoes on Volcano Discovery. And we can see that we have a tremendous amount of elevated seismic activity. And this is uh, the map of our earthquakes. Uh, sorry, the map of our volcanoes. I haven't. I didn't have enough coffee today. That's why I'm. Uh, I'm calling the bison buffalo. I'm calling the bear bison or buffalo, and uh, you know I'm calling buffalo trout. I'm sorry about that. I need some more coffee. <laughs> it's it's not Alzheimer's. It's just lack of coffee. I love I love coffee. I keep telling my sons if you cut my veins, you'll have coffee pouring out. <laughs> okay. Anyway. This is our area. And you can see how close it is, just north of Salt Lake City, and there's a Yellowstone supervolcanoes right there. And as we said here, we have uh, eight volcanoes there. Okay, let's let's look at those as well. We should have another page there. All right, so here we are at the Utah volcanoes as well. So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Okay, and we have the youngest one, I think, Black Rock Desert. Was that more? Or was it, we could see it up here. Black Rock Desert, I think. Or is it bald? I don't know. Let's see. I think it's this one here. Yeah. Okay, this one here, the youngest known of the, uh, it's the youngest lava flow, roughly 660 years old. And that's the one there. Okay, located there. And, um, 
So they're quite young. Then let's go back to our map so that we can get a relative idea of where we are. Okay. And basically, you can see that that's where the mantle plume from Baja comes. The west arm we saw was San Andreas, and then Walker Lane Fault System parallel to that. San Andreas takes up 75% of the subduction pressure. The other 25% is taken up by Walker Lane Fault System, and that's where we have all the high threat volcanoes, including Long Valley Caldera, somewhere around there. All right, this is Salt Lake. You see that body of water, Salt Lake? That's Salt Lake City, Utah. There's Wyoming, and this is Idaho. So switching back to the Idaho quake, the quake area, right there. So you can see that. That's Salt Lake. And there's the other one, Utah. So basically, they make a, a type of a, an inverted L shape, like a 7, with the uh, basically the corner being uh, Salt Lake, right? See that? And then it goes down there. That's all volcanoes. All volcanoes. And it makes sense. Uh, that's where the mantle plume comes from. It's all full of magma there. And um, that shook that whole area. I just had a comment that they had a, they were shaking up in Manitoba in Canada. Not just Seattle, but Manitoba as well. And um, I would venture to say that by you know, if you take the radius the other way, I'm sure Los Angeles shook as well from that. That was really big. Is this awake or not? Okay, there we go. Okay. You can see how intense that is. You can see how intense that is. This is Yellowstone Lake. Where's Yellowstone Lake? I can't see it. Where's the lake? Oh, there it is. Okay, there's the lake right there with that right on top of it. That's Yellowstone Lake. That looks like a little U, unverted U. That's Yellowstone Lake. Hebgen Lake is somewhere in there. Of course, this is all the caldera. The lake is right at the end, the southeast end, the six, five o'clock position of uh, the caldera. And this is it right here. And obviously, that was shade shook Yellowstone very intensely. And if you extrapolate this thing, they felt it up there in Manitoba. I'm sure they felt it in San Diego, San Francisco as well. Okay, the Bay Area. Um, let's go to our, our Idaho quakes. There they are, all in their glory. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine here and eight in um, Utah. Craters of the moon. We know where the craters of the moon are. Uh, they're around the area that we saw that had the uh, lava flows, the pristine lava flows. Of course, we're not going to be able to see this unless we take, take these shake maps off, the shaking off, so that we can see better uh, where they are. Okay. Where is it? Let's take this. We can't see anything with these lines on. Okay. Right there. Basically there. You can even see a pristine looking lava flow there. You see that? Look at that. Look at that. Isn't that something? There we go. It's amazing. It looks like it flew, it came out yesterday, it's so clean, so clean and black. You can see a lot of farming there. This must be very uh, rich in minerals, that area. So this is, <clears throat> this is the area of Craters of the Moon. That's Salt Lake right there. And this is Yellowstone Lake. So you can understand how close all these volcanoes are to each other. We have uh, nine volcanoes here and seven volcanoes there, right there along that line. There we go again, that's using Salt Lake, that's nine there, 
seven there, and that's Yellowstone. I mean, that's an awful lot of volcanoes to have around. You know, it's not just Yellowstone or Long Valley. You've got all the all of this is volcanoes, and then you have Caso Volcanic Field there, and you have the um, in your craters, the Mono, Mono Lake in your craters, the, great, the Long, Long Valley Caldera right there. So, Craters of the Moon. The Craters of the Moon are located at, at the northwest end of the largest lava field of the Snake River Plain in Idaho. The Snake River Plain is right here. You can see that. That's the Snake River Plain right there. Uh, basically, the old path of the hot spot. Uh, and where Yellowstone is today. That's the Snake River Plain. So, uh, the volcanic field contains over 60 lava flows. We saw one of the big ones, the beautiful ones there. You can see it all the way from up here. There it is. 60 lava flows. Can you imagine? Amazing. There we, there we go. 25 cinder cones and up to 250 meter high, eight eruptive fissure systems and covers an area of 1,600 square kilometers. Then you have Hell's Half Acre is the easternmost, second largest of the young basaltic lava fields of the Snake River Plain, Idaho. It covers an area about 400 square kilometers southwest of Idaho Falls, last eruption about 5,200 years ago. And then you have a lot more. Men in Buttes, you have Mountain Home, Kuna Lava Field, Shoshone Lava Field. North of Twin Falls, Idaho, is the westernmost of the young lava fields of the Snake River Plain. Its most, most prominent feature is an L-shaped, 2 to 5 kilometer wide, 60 kilometer long lava flow. And of course, you have more information. Sinker Butte, Wapi Lava Field. Southeast of the craters of the moon is a low shield volcano. Shield volcano. It's called a shield because it looks like a shield, a, a shield like a, a shield of armor, you know, uh, that formed during the eruption about 2,250 years ago, which produced about six cubic kilometers of Pahoho lava flows, covering about 325 square kilometers, consisting of a low shield volcano. Yes, there it is, where is it? Right there. Okay, Craters of the Moon. That's what it looks like. Look at that opening there. Last, last earthquakes nearby, no recent. Okay. The small King's Bowl Rift immediately to the north has formed at about the same time along a central eruptive fissure flanked by two parallel non-eruptive fissures. This eruption produced a phreatic explosion, meaning a hydrothermal explosion that we had in the uh, White uh, Island volcano in, um, Dece on December 9th in New Zealand. Um, the, when the steam is down there, it can't escape. It, it gets so hot, it has to. It blows out. Um, explosion that creates King's Bowl created created King's Bowl. The vent area of the Wapi field lies along the Great Rift of the Craters of the Moon, consisting of five major and half dozen minor vents covering an area of uh, half a square kilometer. That's a lot to be in a half a square kilometer, but anyway. The largest of the vents contains several pit craters that truncate lava lakes that filled the crater, and then Pillar Butte, a mass of layered lava flows and uh, gold tinnates, forms the high point of the lava shield. And you uh, could see that. Now, going back. So we understand that we have uh, nine volcanoes. I have to count them because I said I, I need my coffee. <laughs> nine volcanoes there. Okay. Um, green. So they're not, you know, they're not eruptive, obviously. Normal dormant. Normal dormant. Where is the moon, uh, Cerro Grande volcano, uh, zero. Uh, it doesn't, just because they're extinct doesn't mean that they can't come to life. You know, uh, a little while back, the Kamchatka area of uh, Russia, you know, it's the Kamchatka area has over what, I think 20. I'm saying 20 just because there may be 100, I don't know. But this whole thing here is all volcanoes. 
and the, the Russians had a list of volcanoes there, and uh, they did not include extinct volcanoes uh, because they said, well, they're not going to go off, they're dormant. And uh, to the, they, they didn't have this one volcano on a list. And then they found that it was filled to the brim with uh, magma ready to erupt, and they had to evacuate people. There's not that many people living there. They had to evacuate the people because it was about to erupt. So you never know about these dormant volcanoes. Just because it's dormant and or extinct does not mean that lava you can't go in there again. It's just like we said a little while back what happened in, in that extinct volcano in Russia. So all these, the ones that are black are considered extinct. Okay. Probably, probably extinct, it says. They don't even know. Probably extinct. Okay, probably extinct. And Boise has two of them. Mountain home, Kuna Lava Field, probably extinct. And the other one here, Sinker Butte, probably extinct. And the other four, which are uh, one out of five, normal or dormant. Okay. So, you have uh, volcanoes there. Uh, they're green right now, green uh, color code. There are nine, nine here, and eight here, right there. So we have these banging, uh, what? What would you call them? These uh, out of nowhere, strong volcano, uh, strong earthquakes, 5.7 here, 6.5 there. After the 5.7 here, we had the five in Texas. Out of nowhere, the big ones. And this is, of course, what geologists are told. Sometimes when you get a biggish earthquake, there is no uh, foreshocks. They just happen. And these, of course, the other ones are the aftershocks, and they're still going on. It's a quake swarm there. A, a quake swarm still going on in Salt Lake City. And, of course, in the area of the volcanoes that we have, the Utah volcanoes. And this thing, of course, is in an area of volcanoes. Definitely the two that are in Boise, which are uh, probably extinct, they say. Probably extinct. Okay. Probably extinct. And it's very close to Yellowstone. And from what we have been told, this is what the uh, geologists are fearful of. They're fearful not of too much of a hydrothermal you know, geyser eruption, but they're more fearful of a nearby large earthquake that could crack the, um, that's, that's it right there, caldera. Okay, the, that part of the lake is over the caldera. That's it, and that's Hebgen Lake right there. That's where they had the 7.5 earthquake, August 17, 1959. So, where are we? Here we are. Okay, this is where we had our earthquakes. Uh, epicenter, right there. Okay, right there. Okay. There we go. So all of you there, please very be very careful. And uh, earthquakes, as the geologists of USGS have told us, earthquakes beget earthquakes. And these were very unusual earthquakes here: the Salt Lake City earthquake and this earthquake. Now, have they referred to the magma that's under there? The magma that's coming from uh, uh, Baja. Uh, when we have these quakes here in Texas, for example, they don't refer to the mid-continental rift magma plume, the Coena Fault, that was there to 880 million years ago. It's like a horseshoe shaped. The east part goes around here, around the mid, the New Madrid seismic zone, and the other part goes like this, all the way down through um, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then turns this way west towards New Mexico. And uh, it could be very well be that that's why Texas had an earthquake. And these uh, central United States earthquakes, they can't all be fracking. Of course, a lot of it comes from fracking, but that five magnitude out of nowhere, in tech, again, that was in a fracking field, but five? 
I mean, is five from the fracking? If it is, I mean, we should stop fracking. Five is, five is big. It's biggish. I mean, for a fracking earthquake, five is big. Don't you think? It shook. Uh, after all, it shook Salt Lake City, and uh, you're not. You know, you're playing with fire here because you're talking about nearby uh, super volcanoes, and Yellowstone is considered to be the second biggest super volcano in the world. There are twenty in the world, and three of them are here. We have Yellowstone, we have Long Valley Caldera, and we have Valles Caldera. We also have that one around Three Sisters in Oregon. I did a, a video back, I didn't get too many, I'm not getting too many views, I don't know why. Uh, some people are complaining, they don't get their updates. Please, please, please ring the bell for updates and make sure you have an open tab on my um, channel so you can see the updates because people are having problems. But uh, we also have another super volcano here, and I call it the Yellowstone-like East Coast volcano, super volcano, right here. And there's a huge man magma uh, area right there. Maine has five volcanoes. And upstate New York, we had uh, an uptick in earthquakes, so even uh, in, around the lakes here, around Pittsburgh, around Rhode Island. That shook Long Island, Long Island as well. And uh, we've been having, let's go to the Canadian. There you go. This is, these are, uh, okay, this is the, uh, uh, that says British Columbia. That's, is that British Columbia or is that, I don't know, Saskatchewan or something, I don't know. Um, See, even, I forgot my, even though I'm Canadian also, I, I forgot my provinces. Anyway, this is today's quake, Quebec, as you can see, 1.2. And this was, I think, yesterday. Um, you can see the, the activity there. How much activity there is there. Even offshore, where we have our uh, seamount of 30 uh, underwater volcanoes pointing this way. So, okay, so be very careful because um, something is going on there with uh, these uh, very strong earthquakes coming and just uh, hitting, striking without any foreshocks. All right, so thank you for your support. God bless you. And I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.